Many people think that the mind is the same as the brain, or the brain is the same as the mind. Are they really? I don't think so. Let me show you. Sometimes we picture the brain as a mechanical contraption, old-fashioned or new-fashioned, with neurons, etc., but the idea is the same. As an old philosopher said, if I could walk around in my own brain, I would observe all kinds of actions, but never anything like a thought. Brain scans or functional MRIs never reveal any thoughts. Thoughts come from the mind. So that contraption to the left is basically a mindless brain. Brain waves are material. They can be small or large, short or long. They can be measured and quantified. But thoughts are immaterial. They can be true or false, right or wrong, but they can never be small or large, heavy or light. They are unquantifiable. So we are comparing apples with oranges. In a functional magnetic resonance image, sure, certain activity can be associated with certain mental phenomena, but correlation does not equal causation. Causes might be different. Neural activity is not sufficient for mental activity. It may not cause the mental but just be a re reflection of what is going on in the mind. Neural activity is not even necessary for mental activity. Sometimes there is mental activity when there is no or hardly any neural activity. Examples are near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences. There is hardly any neural activity, and yet there is a lot of mental activity. Cortical deactivation through the use of high power magnetic fields. No neural activity or hardly any, and yet mental activity. Another indication that the mind is not the brain is that the same thought can be transported by different vehicles. In other words, the medium is not the message. The message is very different from the vehicle, the tool, the medium. Brain waves may be the vehicle for our thoughts, but they are not the thoughts itself. A computer is a medium for thoughts. You can write your thoughts on a word processing machine. Morse code is a vehicle for thoughts, for a message. A newspaper is a medium for the message. A radio is a medium for the message. When the radio breaks down, that doesn't mean that the news breaks down. The brain cannot study itself as little as DNA can ever discover itself. Only the mind is able to study the brain. It is the mind of the scientist that can study the brain, not the brain of the scientist. When studying the human brain as an object of science, a scientist needs the human mind as a subject of science. The late neurosurgeon Walter Penfield asked one time his patient to try and resist the movement of the, the person's left arm that he was about to make move by stimulating the motor cortex in the right hemisphere of the brain. The patient grabbed his left arm with his right hand, attempting to restrict the movement that was to be induced by a surgical stimulation of the right brain, which made Penfield say, behind the brain action of one hemisphere was the patient's mind. Behind the action of the other hemisphere was my electrode that I used. Another indication that the mind is not the brain. When Darwin discussed his theory of natural se se selection, he said the mind came up with the theory of natural selection. And then Darwin would say natural selection is the cause behind the mind. If that were true, we are in a vicious circle. Actually, Darwin was cutting off the branch he was sitting on. How can we ever trust something 
like natural selection, the theory of natural selection, if it's the product of something that was created by natural selection. So in other way, we should avoid this boomerang effect. The mind came up with the theory of natural selection, actually Darwin's mind. And natural selection produced the brain, but the brain is not the mind. The mind controls the brain, but, I agree, the brain may not always cooperate. There may be certain defects in the brain, so the mind cannot fully control the brain. A coma patient, the brain is somehow inhibited. An Alzheimer patient, the brain is not cooperated too well anymore. A person with Down syndrome may not have the perfect brain. An unborn baby may not have a brain that is fully developed yet. But the news is still there, though it can no longer come in through a broken radio. These may have lost their brain, but they haven't lost their mind. Let me end with two people who had very consistent, logical, philosophical ideas about this distinction. The biologist J.B. Haldane and the philosopher C.S. Lewis, they came up with this argument. If mental processes are nothing but the motions of atoms in the brain, then we have no reason to suppose that our beliefs are true. And hence, we have no reason for supposing our minds to be composed of atoms. That is a very deep philosophical, logical thought. But when you think about it, it is irresistible. These and many other issues I discuss in my book, What Makes You Tick. My message is basically that neuroscience is not mind science, and neurosurgery is not mind surgery. If the mind were nothing but the brain, there wouldn't be such a thing as neuroscience, because neuroscience is a creation of the mind. And it needs the mind of a scientist in order to study the object of the brain. This book shows you what neuroscientists do, what they cannot do, and perhaps should do. These are the eight chapters in the book. It has a foreword by the neurosurgeon Paul Camarata. It has what I call intermissions that go into more detailed issues if you are interested in those. And all of this can be, be found on the solarspress.com website, amazon.com, genesispc.com slash links.htm. In Amazon.com, just type my name, Gerard Verschuren, and you will find this book and many others I wrote on this kind of issues.